Critics all, both far and near, you who hold the public ear and interpret for the care and counsel of the people, if you find no merit here, please tell it to the people. Write it, speak it everywhere, in converse with the people. You should really have no fear to tell it to the people. If you perchance should find art with poetry interlined, reason, truth, and wit combined, so tell it to the people. All the tangled parts unwind and show them to the people. With a calm and candid mind, present them to the people. Twould alike be fair and kind to tell it to the people. Tell it not to cheer me glad, tell it not to bruise me sad, tell it not to jar me mad, just tell it for the people. As you find it, good or bad, thus deal it to the people. If in homely colors clad, so show it to the people. Nothing minus, nothing add, true, tell it to the people. Me. They are not writ to please, nor the Yankee devil to tease, but outrageous fate to peas. I will write them for the people. Out upon life's foaming seas, I wrought them of the people. When I strike the tuneful keys, I strike to rouse the people. Tell it, therefore, at your ease, but tell it for the people am i sadly cast aside on misfortune's rugged tide will the world my pains deride forever must i dwell in slavery's night and all pleasure take its flight far beyond my feeble sight forever worst of all must hope grow dim and withhold her cheering beam rather let me sleep and dream forever Something still my heart surveys, groping through this dreary maze. Is it hope? Then burn and blaze forever. Leave me not a wretch confined, altogether lame and blind, unto gross despair consigned forever. Heaven, in whom can I confide? Canst thou not for all provide? Condescend to be my guide forever. And when this transient life shall end, O oh, may some kind eternal friend Bid me from servitude ascend forever. When it is finally ours, this freedom, this liberty, This beautiful and terrible thing, Needful to man as air, usable as earth, When it belongs at last to all, When it is truly instinct, brain matter, Diastole, systole, reflex action, When it is finally won, when it is more than the gaudy mumbo-jumbo of politicians, this man, this Douglas, this former slave, this Negro beaten to his knees, exiled, visioning a world where none is lonely, none hunted, alien. This man, superb in love and logic, this man shall be remembered. Oh, not with statues rhetoric, not with legends and poems and wreaths of bronze alone, but with the lives grown out of his life, the lives fleshing his dream of the beautiful, needful thing. Very soon, the Yankee teachers came down and set up school. But oh, how the Rebs did hate it. It was against their rule. Our masters tried to hide book learning from our eyes. Knowledge didn't agree with slavery. It would make us all too wise. But some of us would try to steal a little from the book and put the words together and learn by hook or crook. <laughs> I remember old Uncle Cardwell, who took pot look of fat and greased the pages of his book and hid it in his hat. And if his master had ever seen the leaves upon his head, he would have thought them greasy papers, but nothing to be read. You. You. And there was Mr. Turner's Ben who heard the children spell and picked the words right up by heart and learned to read them well. Well, the northern folks kept sending the Yankee teachers down and they stood right up and helped us though the Rebs did sneer and frown. And I longed to read my Bible for precious words it said 
But when I began to learn it, folks just shook their head and said, there's no use in trying. Oh, Chloe, you're too late. But as I was rising 60, I had not time to wait. So I got me a pair of glasses and straight to work I went and never stopped till I learned to read the hymns and the testaments. Then I got a little cabin, a place to call my own. I felt as independent as the queen up on the throne. Pray, why are you so bare, so bare, O oh bough of the old oak tree? And why, when I go through the shade you throw, runs a shudder over me? My leaves were green as the best I trow, and sap ran free in my veins. But I saw in the moonlight, dim and weird, a guiltless victim's pains. I bent me down to hear his sigh, and shook with his gurgling moan. And I trembled sore when they rode away and left him here alone. They charged him with the old, old crime and set him fast in jail. Oh, why does the dog howl all night long? And why does the night wind wail? He prayed his prayer and he swore his oath and he raised his hand to the sky. But the beat of hoofs smote on his ear, and the steady tread drew nigh. Who is it rides by night, by night over the moonlit road? And what is the spur that keeps the pace that is the galling goad? And now they beat at the prison door. Ho, keeper, do not stay. We are friends of him whom you hold within, and we fain would take him away from those who ride fast on our heels with mind to do him wrong. They have no care for his innocence, and the rope they bear is long. They have fooled the jailer with lying words, and they have fooled the man with lies. The bolts unbar, the locks are drawn, and the great door open flies. Now they have taken him from the jail, and hard and fast they ride, and the leader laughs low down in his throat as they halt my trunk beside. Oh, the judge, he wore a mask of black, and the doctor, one of white, and the minister, with his eldest son, was curiously bedight. Oh, foolish man, why weep you now? Tis but a little space, and the time will come when these shall dread the memory of your face. I feel the rope against my bark and the weight of him in my green. I feel in the throw of his final woe the touch of my own last pain. And never more shall leave come forth on the bough that bears the ban. I am burned with dread. I am dried and dead from the curse of a guiltless man. And ever the judge rides by, rides by and goes to hunt the deer. And even another rides his soul in the guise of a mortal fear. And ever the man, he rides me hard and never a night stays he. For I feel his curse as a haunted bough on the trunk of a haunted tree. It seems to me, said Booker T, it shows a mighty lot of cheek to study chemistry in Greek. When Mr. Charlie needs a hand to hold a cotton on his land, and when Miss Anne looks for a cook, why stick your nose inside a book? I don't agree said W.E.B. If I should have to drive to seek knowledge of chemistry or Greek, I'll do it. Charles and Miss can look another place for hand or cook. Some men rejoice in skill of hand and some in cultivating land. But there are others who maintain the right to cultivate the brain. 
It seems to me, said Booker T, that all you folks have missed the boat who shout about the right to vote and spend vain days and sleepless nights in uproar over civil rights. Just keep your mouth shut and do not grouse, but work and save and buy a house. I don't agree, said W.E.B. For what can property avail if dignity and justice fail? Unless you help to make the laws, they'll steal your house with trumped up calls. A rope's as tight, a fire as hot, no matter how much cash you've got. Speak soft and try your little plan. But as for me, I'll be a man. It seems to me, said Booker T, I don't agree, said W.E.B. I talked to old Lim and old Lim said, they weigh the cotton, they store the corn. We only good enough to work the rows. They run the commissary. They keep the books. We got to be grateful for being cheated. Whippersnapper clerks call us out of our name. We got to say Mr. to Spenlin boys. They make our figures turn somersets. We buck in the middle. Say thank you, sir. They don't come by ones. They don't come by twos. But they come by tens. They got the judges. They got the lawyers, they got the jury rolls, they got the law. They don't come by ones. They got the sheriffs, they got the deputies. They don't come by twos. They got the shotguns, they got the rope. We get the justice in the end. And they come by tens. Their fists stay closed, their eyes look straight. Our hands stay open, our eyes must fall. They don't come by ones. They got the manhood, they got the courage, they don't come by twos. We gotta slink around, hang tail hounds. They burn us when we dogs, they burn us when we men, and they come by tens. I had a buddy, six foot of man, muscled up perfect, game to the heart, they don't come by ones. Outworked and outfought any man or two men, they don't come by twos. He spoke out of turn at the commissary. They gave him a day to get out of the county. He didn't take it. He said, come and get me. They came and got him, and they came by tens. He stayed in the county. He lays there dead. They don't come by ones. They don't come by twos, but they come by tens. Oh, brothers mine, today we stand where half a century sweeps our kin since God through Lincoln's ready hand shook off our bonds and made us men. Just 50 years of winner's day as runs the history of a race. Yet as we look back over the way, how distant seems our starting place. Look further back three centuries to where a naked, shivering score snatched from their haunts across the sea stood wild eyed on Virginia's shores. Far, far the way that we have trod from heathen crawls and jungle dens to Freedmen, freemen, sons of God, Americans and citizens. A part of his unknown design, we've lived within a mighty age. And we have helped to write a line on history's most wondrous page. A few black bondsmen shown along the borders of our eastern coast. Now grown a race ten million strong. An upward, onward, marching host. Then let us here erect a stone to mark the place, to mark the time. A witness to God's mercy shown. A pledge to hold this this day sublime and let that stone and altar be where on thanksgiving we may lay where we in deep humility for faith and strength renew may pray with open hearts that's from above new zeal new courage and new powers that we may grow more worthy of this country and this land of ours and never let the thought arise that we are here on sufferance bare outcast asylum beneath these skies and aliens without part or share 
This land is ours by right of birth. This land is ours by right of toil. We've helped to turn its virgin earth. Our sweat is in its fruitful soil. Where once the tangled forest stood, where flourished once rank weed and thorn, behold, the path trace peaceful wood, the cotton white, the yellow corn to gain these fruits that we have earned, to hold these fields that we have won. Our arms have strained, our backs have burned, been bare beneath the ruthless sun. That banner, which is now the type of victory on both field and flood, remember that his first, that his first crimson stripe was dyed in addicts willing blood. And never yet has come the cry when that fair flag has been assailed for men to do, for men to die, that have we faltered or have failed. We've helped to bear it rent and torn through many a hot breath battle breeze. In our hands it has been born and planted far across the seas. And never yet, O oh haughty land, let us at least, at least for this be praise, has one black treason guided hand ever against that flag been raised. But should we speak but several words, and shall we hang our heads in shame, stand back of new-come foreign herds, and fear our heritage to claim? No, no, stand erect and without fear, and for our foes let this suffice. We bought a rightful sonship here, and we have more than paid the price. And yet, my brothers, well I know, the tethered feet, the pinion wings, the spirit bows beneath the blow. The heart grows faint from wounds and stings. That staggering force of brutish might that strikes and leaves us stunned in days. The long vein waiting through the night to hear some voice for justice raise. Full well I know the hour when hope sinks dead and around us everywhere. Hang stifling darkness and we grope with hands uplifted in despair. Courage, look out beyond and see the far horizon's beckoning span. Faith in our God known destiny. We are a part of some great plan. Because the tongues of Garrison and Phillips now are cold in death. Think you their works can be undone or quench the fires lit by their breath. Think you that John Brown's spirit stops, that love joy was but idly slain. Or do you think those precious drops from Lincoln's heart were shed in vain? That for which millions prayed and sighed, that for which tens of thousands fought, for which so many freely died, God cannot let it come to naught. Amen. Amen. If we must die, let it not be like hogs hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs making their mock at our cursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show brave, and for their thousand blows deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men will face the murderous, cowardly pack. Pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. To be a Negro in a day like this demands forgiveness. Bruised with blow on blow, betrayed like him, whose woe-dimmed eyes gave bliss, still must one succor those who brought one low. To be a Negro in a day like this. To be a Negro in a day like this demands rare patience. Patience that can wait in utter darkness. Tis the path to miss and knock unheeded at an iron gate. To be a Negro in a day like this. To be a Negro in a day like this demands strange loyalty. We serve a flag which is to us white freedom's emphasis. Ha! Ah, one must love when truth and justice lag to be a Negro in a day like this. To be a Negro in a day like this. Alas, Lord God, what evil have we done? 
still shines the gate, all gold and amethyst. But I pass by the glorious ghoul unwon, merely a negro in a day like this. I doubt not. God is good, well-meaning, kind. And did he stoop to quibble, could tell why the little buried mole continues blind, why flesh that mirrors him must someday die, make plain the reason tortured Tantalus is baited by the fickle fruit, declare if merely brute caprice dooms Sisyphus to struggle up a never-ending stare. Inscrutable his ways are, and immune to catechism by his mind too strewn with petty cares to slightly understand what awful brain compels his awful hand. Yet do I marvel at this curious thing to make a poet black and bid him sing. O oh, rich young lord, thou ridest by with looks of high disdain. It chafes me not thy title high, thy blood of oldest strain. The lady riding at thy side is but in name thy promised bride. Ride on, young lord, ride on. Her father wills, and she obeys the custom of her class. Tis land not love the trothing sways, for land he sells his lass. Her fair white hand, young lord, is thine. Her soul, proud fool, her soul is mine. Ride on, young lord, ride on. No title high my father bore, the tenant of thy farm. He left me what I value more, clean heart, clear brain, strong arm. And love for bird and beast and bee, and song of lark and hymn of sea. Ride on, young lord, ride on. The boundless sky to me belongs, the paltry acre is thine. The painted beauty sings thy songs, the lavrock lilts me mine. The hothoused orchid blooms for thee. The gorse and heather bloom for me. Ride on, young lord, ride on. Brother, come, and let us go unto God. And when we stand before him, I shall say, Lord, I do not hate. I am hated. I scourge no one. I am scourged. I covet no lands. My lands are coveted. And brother, what shall you say? Oh, for the veils of my faraway youth, shielding my heart from the blaze of the truth. Why did I stray from their shelter and grow into the sadness that follows to know? Impotent Adam with desolate gaze, threading the tumult of hazardous ways. Oh, for the veils, for the veils of my youth. Veils that hung low, or the blaze of the truth. I love you for your brownness, and the rounded darkness of your breast. I love you for the breaking sadness in your voice, and shadows where your wayward eyelids rest. Something of old forgotten queens lurks in the lithe abandon of your walk. And something of the shackled slave sobs in the rhythm of your talk. Oh, little brown girl, born for sorrow's mate, keep all you have of queenliness, forgetting that you once were a slave, and let your full lips laugh at fate. I can remember when I was a little young girl, how my old mammy would sit out of doors in the evenings and look up at the stars and groan, and I would say, Mammy, what makes you groan so? And she would say, I am groaning to think of my poor children. They do not know where I be, and I don't know where they be. I look up at the stars, and they look up at the stars. Sojourner Truth. I think I see her sitting bowed and black, stricken and seared with slavery's mortal scars, reft of her children, lonely, anguished, yet still looking at the stars. Symbolic mother, we thy myriad sons, pounding our stubborn hearts on freedom's bars, 
clutching our birthright, fight with faces set, still visioning the stars. It is fitting that you be here, little brown boys with Christ-like eyes and curling hair. Look you on yonder crucifix, where he hangs nailed and pierced, with head hung low and eyes all blind with blood that drops from a thorny crown. Look you well, you shall know this thing. Judas' kiss shall burn your cheek, and you will be denied, and your Peter in Gethsemane. You shall know full well Gethsemane. You too will suffer under Pontius Pilate. You feel that rugged cut of rough hewn cross upon your surging shoulder. They will spit in your face and laugh and will nail you up twixt these and gamble for your garments. And in this you will exceed God. For all on this earth you shall know hell. O little brown boys with Christ-like eyes and curling hair, it is fitting that you be here. They dragged you from the homeland. They chained you in coffles. They huddled you spoon fashion in filthy hatches. They sold you to give a few gentlemen ease. They broke you in like oxen. They scourged you. They branded you. They made your women breeders. They swelled your numbers with bastards. They taught you the religion they disgraced. You sang, keep an inch and a long like a poor inch worm. You sang, by and by, I'm going to lay down this a heavy load. You sang, walk to get a chillin', don't you get weary. The strong men keep a coming on. The strong men get stronger. They point with pride to the roads you built for them. They ride in comfort over the rails you laid for them. They put hammers in your hand and said, drive so much before sundown. You sang, ain't no hammer in this land. Strikes like mine, baby. Strikes like mine. They cooped you in their kitchens. They pinned you in their factories. They gave you the jobs that they were too good for. They tried to guarantee happiness to themselves by shunting dirt and misery to you. You sang, me and my baby gon' shine, shine, me and my baby gon' shine. The strong men keep a coming on. The strong men get stronger. They brought off some of your leaders. You stumbled as blind men will. They coaxed you, unwantedly soft voice. You followed away, then laughed as usual. They heard the laugh <laughs> and wondered, unadmitting a deeper terror. The strong men keep a coming on, getting stronger. What from the slums where they have hemmed you? What from the teeny huts they could not keep from you? What reaches them, making them ill at ease, fearful? Today they shout prohibitions at you. Thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that, reserved for whites only. <laughs> you laugh. One thing they cannot prohibit, the strong men coming on. Strong men get stronger. She does not know her beauty. She thinks her brown body has no glory. But if she could dance naked under palm trees and see her image in the river, she would know. But there are no palm trees on the street and dishwater gives back no images. Well, son, I'll tell you. Life of me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor. Bear.
but all the time I've been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light so boy don't you turn back don't you sit down on the steps cause you find it's kinda hard don't you fall now fires are still going honey Eyes are still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. I read in the papers about the freedom train. I heard on the radio about the freedom train. I seen folks talking about the freedom train. Lord, I've been waiting for the freedom train. Washington, Richmond, Durham, Chattanooga, Atlanta, way across Georgia. Lord, 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 way down in Dixie. The only trains I see's got Jim, Jim Crow, Jim Crow coaches set aside for me. I hope there ain't no Jim Crow on the freedom train. No backdoor entrance on the freedom train. No sign for colored on the freedom train no white folks only on the freedom train i'm going to check up i'm going to check up on this freedom train who is the engineer on the freedom train can a cold black man drive the freedom train or am i still a porter on the freedom train is there ballot boxes on the freedom train do colored folks vote on the freedom train when it stops in Mississippi, will it be made plain? Everybody's got a right to board the freedom train. I'm going to check up. I'm going to check up on this freedom train. The Birmingham stations marked colored and white. The white folks go left and the colored go right. They even got a segregated lane. Is that the way to get aboard the freedom train? I'm going to check up. I'm going to check up on this freedom train. If my children ask me, Daddy, please explain why a Jim Crow station for the freedom train? What should I tell my children? You tell me, because freedom ain't freedom when a man ain't free. My brother Jimmy died in Anzio. He died for real, and it wasn't no show. Is this here freedom on the freedom train really freedom or a show again? Now let the freedom train come zooming down the track. Gleaming in the sunlight for white and black, not stopping at no stations marked color or white, just stopping in the fields in the broad daylight, stopping in the country in the wide open air where there never was a Jim Crow sign nowhere. And no lily white committees, politicians of note, nor poll tax layer through which color can't vote. And there won't be no kind of color lines. The freedom train will be yours and mine. Then maybe from their graves in Anzio, black men and white will say, we want it so. Black men and white will say, ain't it fine? At home, they got a freedom train, a freedom train that's yours and mine. This is for the Pullman porters who organized when people said they couldn't and carried the Pittsburgh Courier and the Chicago Defender to the black Americans in the South so they would know they were not alone. This is for the Pullman porters who helped Thurgood Marshall go south and come back north to fight the fight that resulted in Brown versus Board of Education. Because even though Kansas is west, and even though Topeka is the birthplace of Gwendolyn Brooks, who wrote the powerful The Chicago Defenders and The Man of Little Rock, it was the Pullman porters who whispered to the traveling men, both the blues men and the race men, so that they would both know what was going on. This is for the Pullman porters, who smiled as if they were happy and laughed like they were tickled when some folks were around, and who silently rejoiced in 1954 when the Supreme Court announced its 9-0 decision that separate is inherently unequal. This is for the Pullman porters who smiled and welcomed a 14-year-old boy onto their train in 1955. 
They noticed his slight limp that he tried to disguise with a doo-wop walk. They noticed his stutter and probably understood why his mother wanted him out of Chicago during the summer when school was out. Fourteen-year-old black boys with limps and stutters are apt to try to prove themselves in dangerous ways when mothers aren't around to look after them. So this is for the Pullman porters who looked over that fourteen-year-old while the train rolled the reverse of the Blues Highway from Chicago to St. Louis to Memphis to Mississippi. This is for the men who kept him safe. And if Emmett Till had been able to stay on a train all summer, he would have grown maybe a bit of a paunch. Certainly lost his hair. Probably have worn bifocals and bounced his grandchildren on his knee, telling them about his summer riding the rails. But he had to get off the train. And ended up in Money, Mississippi. And was horribly, brutally, inexcusably, and unacceptably murdered. This is for the Pullman porters who, when the sheriff was trying to get the body secretly buried, got Emmett's body on the northbound train, got his body home to Chicago, where his mother said, I want the world to see what they did to my boy. And this is for all the mothers who cried. And this is for all the people who said, never again. And this is about Rosa Parks, whose feet were not so tired. It had been, after all, an ordinary day until the bus driver gave her the opportunity to make history. This is about Mrs. Rosa Parks from Tuskegee, Alabama, who was also the field secretary of the NAACP. This is about the moment Rosa Parks shouldered her cross, put her worldly goods aside, was willing to sacrifice her life so that the young man in Money, Mississippi, who had been so well protected by the Pullman porters, would not have died in vain. When Mrs. Park said no, a passionate movement was begun. No longer would there be a reliance on the law. There was a higher law. When Mrs. Parks brought that light of hers to expose the evil of the system, the sun came and rested on her shoulders, bringing the heat and the light of truth. Others would follow Mrs. Parks. Four young men in Greensboro, North Carolina, would also say no. Great voices would be raised, singing the praises of God and exhorting us to forgive those who trespass against us. But it was the Pullman porters who safely got Emmett to his granduncle, and it was Mrs. Rosa Parks who could not stand that death. And in not being able to stand it, she sat back down. When Fannie Lou Hamer said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, she meant no more turn cheek, no more patience for the obstruction of a black woman's right to vote and plant and feed her family. She meant equality will cost you your luxurious life if a black woman can't vote, if a brown baby can't be fed, if we all don't have the same opportunity America promised. She meant ain't no mountain bolder enough to one off a determined woman. She meant look. Here, at my hands, each palm holds a history of the 16 shots that chased me harm free from a plantation shack. Look at my eyes, both these are windows, these little lights of mine. She meant nothing, but death can stop me from marching out of jail cell, still a free woman. She meant nothing, but death can stop me from running for Congress. She meant no black jack beating will stop my feet from working and my heart from swelling and my mouth from praying. She meant America. You will learn freedom feels like butter beans, potatoes, and cotton seeds picked by my sturdy hands. She meant, look, Victoria Gray, Anna Devine, and me in our rightful seats on the house floor. She meant until my children and my children's children and they babies too can march and vote and get back in interest what was planted in this blessed land. She meant I ain't stopping America. I ain't stopping America. Not even death can take away from my woman hands what I've rightfully earned. Original. Ragged. Round. Rich. Robust. He had the hawk man's eyes. We gasped. We saw the maleness. The maleness raking out and making guttural the air and pushing us to walls. 
and in a soft and fundamental hour, a sorcery devout and vertical beguiled the world. He opened us, who was a key, who was a man. I was born in the Congo. I walked to the Fertile Crescent and built the Sphinx. I designed a pyramid so tough that a star that only glows every 100 years falls into the center giving divine, perfect light. I am bad. I sat on the throne drinking nectar with Allah. I got hot and sent an ice age to Europe to cool my thirst. My oldest daughter is Nefertiti. The tears from my birth pains created the Nile. I am a beautiful woman. I gazed on the forest and burned out the Sahara Desert. With a packet of goat's meat and a change of clothes, I crossed it in two hours. I am a gazelle. So swift, so swift, you can't catch me. For a birthday present when he was three, I gave my son Hannibal an elephant. He gave me Rome for Mother's Day. My strength flows ever on. My son Noah built Newark, and I stood proudly at the helm as we sailed on a soft summer day. I turned myself into myself and was Jesus, men and tone, my loving name. All praises, all praises, I am the one who would save. I sow diamonds in my backyard. My bowels deliver uranium. The filings from my fingernails are semi-precious jewels. On a trip north, I caught a cold and blew my nose, giving oil to the Arab world. I am so hip, even my errors are correct. I sailed west to reach east and had to round off the earth as I went. The hair from my head thinned and gold was laid across three continents. I am so perfect, so divine, so ethereal, so surreal. I cannot be comprehended except by my permission. I mean, I can fly like a bird in the sky. The boy died in my alley without my having known. Policeman said next morning, apparently died alone. You heard a shot? Policeman said, shots I hear and shots I hear. I never see the dead. The shot that killed him, yes, I heard, as I heard, the thousand shots before, careening tenderly down the nights across my years and arteries. Policemen pounded on my door. Who is it? Police! Policemen yelled. A boy was dying in your alley. A boy is dead and in your alley. And have you known this boy before? I have known this boy before. I've known this boy before who ornaments my alley. I never saw his face at all. I never saw his future fall. But I have known this boy. I have always heard him deal with death. I have always heard the shout, the volley. And I have closed my heart ears late and early. And I have killed him ever. I joined the wild and killed him with knowledgeable unknowing. I saw where he was going. I saw him cross and seen. I did not take him down. He cried not only father, but mother, sister, brother. The cry climbed up the alley. It went up to the wind. It hung upon the heaven for a long stretch strain a moment. The red floor of my alley is a special speech to me. Say it with your whole black mouth. I am innocent. And if you are not innocent, say this. I am worthy of forgiveness, of breath after breath. I tell you this. I let blue eyes dress me in guilt, walked around stores convinced the very skin of my palm was stolen. And what good has that brought me? Days filled flinching, thinking the sirens were reaching for me. And when the sirens were for me, did I not make peace with God? So many white people are alive because we know how to control ourselves. How many times have we died on a whim, wielded like gallows in their sunshine hands? Here, standing in my own body, I say, the next time they murder us for the crime of their imaginations, I don't know what I'll do. I did not come to preach of peace. For that is not the hunted's duty. I came here to say what I can't say 
without my name being added to a list. What my mother fears, I'll say. What she wishes to say herself. I came here to say. I can't bring myself to write it down. Sometimes I dream of pulling a red apology from a pig's collared neck and wake up cracking up. If I dream of setting fire to cul-de-sacs, I wake chained to the bed. I don't like thinking about doing to white folks what white folks done to us. When I do, can't say I don't dance. Oh, my people. How long will we reach for God instead of something sharper? My lovely doe with a taste for meat, take the hunter by his hand. We pledge allegiance to your flag of the United States of America and to your republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for who? For you? For some? Not for us. Not for our people, so please stop saying we equal with your flag of red, white, and blue in one hand. You beat us until we're black and blue with the other beat us until we're none beat us until we can't walk straight. Then you put us in chains if we lucky. But for the ones of us who are all so lucky, you tell us to put our hands up as some type of sick tribute to your privilege. And then you pull the trigger, pull the trigger into our bodies, lay down on your ground, pull the trigger into your clip is empty, pull the trigger until we make your evening news. And then when our children cry, we have to look our children in the eyes and tell them that they have to be cautious. That when they walk your streets, they have to do so in fear that they have to spend an entirety of their life looking over their shoulder because you will hunt them down. And you will bury them. Either in a prison system that aims to disenfranchise them or the dirt beneath their feet. And this is all because of that same racism that you love to say no longer exists. But we all know that that same racism is the reason that when we want to put a hood on, we resist. The reason that when we go to get these jobs, we're dismissed at the door. The reason that when we go to shop, we're watched in your stores. That racism is the reason that us saying your Pledge of Allegiance feels a lot like a root canal or a whip's impact against our flesh or a baton to our head or a bullet in our back or tear gas at a Black Lives Matter protest. That racism is the reason. That three women clenched their purses as I walk through the entrance of this very building. It hurts. That I have to remember that the system I was born into was built to work against me. Hurts that I have to remember. Hurts that I have to remember. Hurts that I have to. Hurts that I actually have to remember that you will happily invest more money into the preservation of wildlife than you ever will into the preservation of black life. Let me ask y'all a question. When y'all turn on your TVs and witness another black body laid out on your concrete, what do y'all see? Another murder? <laughs> another sad story? Another funeral, do you see the aftermath? I see another child that lost their father. Another single woman trying to raise a man. Another broken home which leads to another child that grows up and suffers the same fate as their father. Which means another black woman that outlives her adolescent son. This country practices a culture that lacks equal rights for blacks. And we love to say that black don't crack me while y'all shatter our melanin like glass. My back breaks for everybody you lay at our feet. For every memory I try to erase within your war zones. Late nights reveal that my PTSD has found its way to the surface. And my hate for this country reminds me that I'm far from patriotic, so it's a little ironic that I pledge allegiance to your flag of the United States of America and to your republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for who? Well, son, I'll tell you. Life for me ain't been no crystal stat. It's had tax in it. 
boards torn up places with no carpet on the floor bare but all the time I's been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light so boy don't you stop now don't you sit down on the steps cause you finds us kind of hard but I'm still going boy I'm still climbing and life for me ain't been no crystal stair well life for none of us has been a crystal stair but we must keep moving we must keep going if you can't fly run if you can't run walk if you can't walk crawl but by all means keep moving